I have always liked the Tomb Raider series. Uh, the new games were fantastic. The old games were great. I, I like Laura Croft. She's a powerful, strong female character who, just like the title says, raids tombs, which is what you would expect from a game called Tomb Raider, right? Well, not anymore. Uh, Tomb Raiders are no longer allowed to raid tombs, according to Crystal Dynamic. Uh, uh, apparently, fictional characters raiding fictional tombs for fictional artifacts is real life bad. Here's the statement, you know, talking about how raiding tombs is related to colonialism. And basically, if you go into a tomb and you find a, a, an abandoned artifact that has been left there for thousands of years that the original owners have died and left behind, uh, it does not qualify for the ancient playground rule of finders keepers. I'll just be honest with you, once I die, I don't care what happens to my stuff because I'm dead. Feel free to dig me up, use my body parts for whatever you want to, make a soap ball out of my skull. I won't care because I can't care because I'm dead. So yeah, finders keepers applies to me, but apparently not to fictional video game tombs. Now in the statement, they did point out that, you know, Laura primarily like kept the original artifacts that she found and later in the most rebooted games, they decided that, you know, Laura had to feel guilty about all of this. And so, you know, they addressed it by ever acknowledging her past mistakes, to try to understand and show respect for the cultures and communities she comes into contact with. Again, fictional versions of those uh, communities and cultures, but whatever. She worked to reform Raider culture and raise awareness of her peers. But you know what? In uh, 2024, that's no longer enough. In the new game, they're going to continue in that work alongside Crystal Dynamics by creating a sandbox for you to tell stories that address colonialist themes in play and create your own stories of respect and support for people and cultures your seekers encounter. And hey, here's some of the seekers you can play. Yes, I know the game series is called Tomb Raider, but now they're no longer raiders. They are seekers, probably seekers of truth and justice and the American way, that kind of thing. Well, probably not the American way, but here's an example of the seekers that you'll be able to play. Uh, you know, you get a pretty good, a lot of diversity here, a lot of diversity here. Uh, there does seem to be one group of people being not represented here, but hmm, I wonder who it is. Probably one of the most just embarrassing parts of all of this is the series is called Tomb Raider, but Laura will no longer be known as a Tomb Raider. She will now be an archaeological explorer, which is, again, just the same thing, really, except you're being way more PC about it, but you're still saying the same thing. Why not just say Tomb Raider? That is the name of the series. And what's crazy about it is, again, these are fictional characters, you know, fictionally raiding fictional tombs. And that's not the worst thing that Laura Croft does in these games, is not the stealing of artifacts or the exploring of tombs. She kills people. She's a murderer. She kills animals and peoples and I think also ghosts and shit. But at the end of the day... Are we overlooking all of the murders? Is that what we've chosen to do for your video game? It's okay if she murders dozens and dozens and dozens of people in every game. Hundreds of defenseless animals. Doesn't matter. Because the crime was that she was raiding a tomb to look for fancy rocks. But as long as she's now an archaeological explorer and not a tomb raider... And she has a party of diverse characters going with her that you can play, then it doesn't matter how many humans and animals you murder to find those fancy rocks. Or, I guess, return those fancy rocks to the rightful owners in the new games, maybe. Who knows? Like, I get it. The British Museum is full of stolen artifacts that were stolen during wartime and all of that stuff. I get that. If you want, if you're the kind of person that wants those artifacts to be returned to the original civilizations, hey, go for it. Make a campaign, run for that, get it done. I, I don't really care. I don't care about the British Museum. I do think it's crazy if you're putting those efforts into getting a fictional Tomb Raider to return fictional artifacts to fictional cultures. That's crazy sauce. You are a crazy person. And one of the weirdest things about this is Tomb Raider is a series with a strong female lead, and it's a game series that pretty much everyone likes. And so it feels like it was doing a really good job of getting the message across. We're like, no, it's not politically correct enough. Put a fat black chick in it. Put a giant Hawaiian guy. I think it might be Hawaiian. Giant Hawaiian guy in it. 
and make sure you play those characters because we want to get as far away from the strong female character that everyone likes. You remember in the last games, it was all about how strong and powerful she was and how she had to fight to survive and do everything she could to, to manage to be there and just exist. That message was not strong enough. Put put this tall, blonde, uh, clearly trans person in it. I think she's trans. She's called The Changed. If she is trans, it's really on the nose, right? But maybe not. Maybe I could be wrong. We'll have to wait till the game comes out. I mean, Tomb Raider is a series that's as almost as ancient to some of you guys as the Tomb's Laura's rating, right? If there was a Tomb from the 90s, you guys would be like, oh, yeah, that's probably what she's rating. But <laughs> this game has been successful. The series has been successful since the 90s. And this has this amazing legacy. Why are you destroying it? Why would you want to tank this series? Because they know absolutely by now that doing this stuff is going to get it rejected by the consumer. And they're doing it anyway. And the game series was already progressive enough when it had a strong female lead that everyone liked. Why do you want to ruin that? Make that make sense. Also, I can't end this video without throwing a dig at my favorite card game of all time, Magic the Gathering. In just the last 365 days, they did a crossover with Tomb Raider. And you got to remember, the folks that make Magic the Gathering, they are like ultra progressive. They don't ever want to do anything problematic. Well, look how problematic this is. You've got the words Tomb Raider on a Magic the Gathering card. Imagine the egg on their face. Or maybe... Even the leftists of Wizards of the Coast realize this is stupid. Maybe. I hope it's that one. It's probably that one. Now, don't forget, you can always go back and play all of the classic Tomb Raider games, right? Specifically the reboots, which really did move the needle in terms of progressiveness to a point that I thought everyone would be satisfied on. I just saw that Shadow of the Tomb Raider got added to Game Pass. You can play it with cloud gaming. If you got Game Pass, you can play it on your PC. Play it on your computer. Studies are showing that people are playing older games way more now. And I can't imagine as to why it is. But if you go boot up Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which I think you can get on like Steam for like 20 or 30 bucks, you'll be playing what will effectively be the last Tomb Raider game and not the brand new Archaeological Explorer game series. So maybe go boot it up. Because the Tomb Raider series, for some reason, is changing irrevocably. They want to move away from Laura Croft. They want to move into this more diverse cast and they want to stop raiding tombs. And I think there's a reason, maybe a couple of reasons, that they don't want us getting to see as much of Laura Croft. I don't know what those two reasons could be. It seems like it'd be as plain as the nose on my face or the lumps on my chest, but there's probably a reason. I wonder if you can figure it out and tell me in the comments section below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I love you very much, and I will speak with you again soon.